Father, we give you the praise and we give you the honor for a night like this. Blessed be your name. Honor to your name. Adoration to your name. Worship to your name. Supremacy, dominion, rule, and sovereignty be to your name. Thank you, Master. Here is a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea. The Spirit of the Lord is moving and all over the world as the prophet said it should be. Blessed be your name, Lord. Acts chapter 2 from verse 1. Can remain standing as we read this scripture all the way to verse 13. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, can we read? They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And he filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And he sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together. And were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another behold are not all these which speak Galileans and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born Patrians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia in Pontius and in Asia Phrygia Pamphylia in Egypt and in the past of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jewish and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Keep going. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth these? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. Hearken to my words, you are not reading. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' precious name. Father, thank you for tonight. Let not one person live here the same way they've come. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap as you take your sin. The subject of this conference is the wind and fire of revival. And that will be our theme for tonight. To introduce officially the conference. The morning session was more for um, healing and deliverance service. Our objective tonight is to understand the character or the characteristics of a revival. What happens? What do we expect in a season of revival? Some people think that revival is a church event. We have a midweek revival. We have a weekend revival. Yes, it can be.
But revival is far beyond that. Revival is the season of intense manifestation of the almightiness of God among a people. The season of intense manifestation of the almightiness of God among a people. The season of the intense manifestation of the almightiness of God among a people. Revival also number two is the invasion of the climate and resources of heaven upon the earth. The invasion of both the climate and the resources of heaven upon the earth. What happens in the season of revival? I'm going to be very sharp tonight. Number one, what do we expect in a season of revival? Number one, the sound from heaven. In every season of revival, heaven says something. When heaven speaks and earth hears, revival can explode. When heaven speaks and earth hears, revival happens. Many times heaven speaks but the earth hasn't heard. So nothing happens. It is also important to note that when heaven gives a sound and the earth hears the sound, there will be something for the world to hear. When heaven gives the sound and the people of God gets the sound, the world must hear something. So in a season of revival, there is something to hear. There is a sound. There is something to hear. There is a sound. When revival happens, it can't be business as usual. You are no longer muted. If a man is saying something and nobody is hearing, it means he hasn't heard anything from heaven yet. The sound from heaven, number two, is the light from heaven. The season of revival is the season of the light from heaven. There is something to see. The meaning of that is revival season is a season of revelation explosion. There is something to see. And, and as I speak right now, there are eyes that will be opened. Eyes will be opened. Ears will be opened. In the name that is above every name. A revival season is a highly prophetic season. Highly prophetic season. It's a highly prophetic season. It's a highly prophetic season. A season to hear and a season to see. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Now that translates into visible manifestations of God. So if we say there is 
there is revival in a church or in a land or in a city, there is something for the people of that land to see. Is a, a season of revent, revival is the season of evidential spirituality. Evidential spirituality. Evidential spirituality. There is something that is evident. It is not theoretical spirituality. It is evidential spirituality. When they were doubting the calling of Jesus Christ, when John the Baptist said to Jesus, he sent some people and he said to him, are you the one to come or do we expect another to come? He said, go and tell John the Baptist that the blind see and the deaf hear. He said, but blessed is he that is not offended in me. In other words, if I show up anywhere, there is something to see and there is something to hear. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Except God is not there. If God is there, if God is moving, if God is in the ministry, if God is anywhere, there is something to see and there is something to hear. Otherwise, we turn it into a symposium, a lecture hall, is a normal secular seminar that has no nothing other than just appeal to the mind. Is God speaking to someone here at all? This is very, very important. This is very, very important. If you are a pastor, insist on nothing other than evidential spirituality. Don't refuse theoretical religion, theoretical, theological religion. Trust God for evidential spirituality. We are even the most hardened of atheists will say, I can see something. The season of revival is the sound from heaven. Is number two, the light from heaven. And number three, are you ready for this? Is the warmth and wind from heaven. Warmth or heat, heat and wind from heaven. When the wind blows, even if you didn't see it and you didn't hear it, you feel it. Even if you didn't see it, even if you didn't hear it, it was not loud enough and it was not visible enough, yet you feel, you feel the wind, you feel the wind, you feel the wind. We are in the generation where even if the devil himself enters into the assembly, he must feel something. He must feel something. He must feel something. The atheists must feel something. The Islamists must feel something. The Buddhists must feel something. They must feel the God we serve. They must feel the reality, the materiality, the tangibility of our spirituality. The reality, the materiality, the tangibility of our spirituality. The two things that came at Pentecost are things to feel. Fire, you feel the heat. Wind, you feel the breeze. Am I communicating at all? Because there are people, they, 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 it is not what they see that will move them or what they hear, but what they felt. Their body felt something. Their, their minds felt something. Their emotions felt something. They stepped into the assembly. In, in, in Charles Giffini's ministry, it was not what, people, what he said that changed people not what he said it was not what even people saw it was what they felt they just felt something this man will be in one location and 50 miles away people are weeping for their sins 
what they felt. What do you call her, Maria Woodward Ita? Will be in a city organizing a crusade and people coming on ship inside the ship 50 to 100 miles on the high sea away from the from land from the harbor of the city where she is they are coming under power inside the ship experiencing trances and revelations and coming under power what is happening to the crew what is happening to the ship only for them to realize that a woman is holding a crusade where they were going in her meetings people will be under power for 24 hours is God speaking to somebody here at all we have, we, have, we have gone so far from revival of scripture, from spirituality, until we have gotten so satisfied with, 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 with ordinary, ordinary profession of faith and ordinary instructions and teachings that appeal to the mind. And then we just come and just go, no, but something is about to happen. That is why the theme of this conference is the sound and the and the the wind and the fire of revival because God is bringing us back to that point where people will, will hear something and then they will see something and then they will feel something. Lift your hand, say, Father, I am ready. I am ready. I am ready for the sound. I am ready for the fire. I am ready for the wind of revival. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. I have so much to say tonight. But Number four is the deposit from heaven. When revival happens, deposits are made. Deposits. God lays upon people what they need to fulfill their assignment for that season. They are sat upon them. It was a one, one, one translation said, clothing tongues of fire were distributed on their head. In our university days, we used to hold what we call campus fire conference. When we do that, our handbill that we do, will write under the handbill, ensure that you are there because there will be a sure distribution of fire. Fire will be shared. It will be shared. Fire, there, there will be a sharing of fire. Not money. Not cloth. Am I communicating? You step into a revival climate empty, you step out loaded. Because God places a deposit anywhere he intends to make a demand. He places a deposit on the pastor, places a deposit on the minister, places a deposit on his servants in a revival climate. That was what happened to Peter. Such that when Peter stepped onto the streets of Jerusalem, his shadow was healing the sick because deposit was made. Then the deposit was made on the day of Pentecost. When he showed up at the gate of the beautiful the gate called beautiful, he looked at the man, he said silver and gold I have none but such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. And he jacked up the man because a deposit was made on him on the day of Pentecost and he had to discharge that deposit. Our deposits may be different. Some may be prophetic deposits, some apostolic deposits, some teaching deposits, healing deliverance deposits. But in the real climate of revival, people will look at you and say, what happened to this man? Is Saul also among the prophets? When did this man become a healing evangelist? When did this man become a prophet? When did this man become an apostle? What happened to him? Is because you stepped somewhere and a deposit was made 
And as the deposit was made, you stepped on the street and you begin to make deliveries and begin to make deliveries and deliveries and deliveries. I want someone to make demands on God right now before this convention is over. Lord, I cannot live here empty. I cannot live here empty. That deposit I need, I need for life. I need for ministry. I need for my destiny. I need for my assignment. I am I, I make demands on this deposit now. On this deposit now. On this deposit now. On this deposit now. I make demands on said in Romans chapter 1 verse 11 he said I long for you I long to see you that I may impart unto you I want to drop some deposit in your life to the end that you may be established you understand that that whatever be the situation of your life or your ministry if there is a struggle somewhere a deposit is needed to tackle such a struggle if there is a need for growth, a need for a particular dimension of result, a need for a particular dimension of manifestation, a deposit somewhere. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Let me at least go halfway today. My and deposit is in levels. You know the evangelistic grace is in levels. Okay? You know teaching grace is in levels. Pastoral grace is in levels. Somebody has a level of pastoring a thousand people, two thousand people, and he has tried. But if he needs to move higher, he may need a higher deposit. Somebody Somebody having been kidnapped was inside the bush. You heard a testimony in the thick forest around Ore, uh, Bini Express Road. She was right inside the bush and began to sing one of the songs that God gave us. You are always there to help. You are always there to help me. Even when no one else was there. You are always there for me. Even when I can't feel you. Even when I cannot trace you. I still have faith in your word that you are always there for me. And she was right in the middle of the bush. Put her head inside her, her legs and then lifted up her head. The next time she had, she had evaporated from that place. She has disappeared from the middle of kidnappers. And she's right by the express road. By the highway. She's seated by the highway. By the highway. Beside military checkpoint. So what happened to Philip will still happen again. We are in those days. Where the things we read about in scripture will be happening again. Where somebody is planning. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You know what? Some time to come. And this will happen. I've seen it in Revelation. Where you found yourself in Ghana. And you didn't fly there. So you wanted to return back. And you are wondering. 
So how do I get back? So I said, let me have to buy a return ticket now. Since the miracle only brought me here. But this is where I was going. That you are always there to help me. And all these other songs. I don't know the number of testimonies it has produced in the life of people. Singing it in the, whatever. While singing inside the service. Whether they were singing on their own. Then someone saw a revelation one day and he came to tell me. Then I understood. He said, sir. I saw in the revelation where there was a tall shelf. And there was a lot of music notes and music things on those shelves. He said, I saw you. You were peace picking the music from top. He said, I saw many other people pick, getting music too, but they were getting it from under the shelf, from, from the lower level of the shelf. So okay. The thing is in levels. Not just the melody of the message, but the mantle it carries. Not just that he, 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 I sang the song, but what is the anointing? What is the level of that song in the realm of the spirit? What level of powers can it deal with? Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? See, so, so, when revival happens, deposits are made. In all humility, by his mercies, I am a product of diverse deposits. Because of dieless hunger. Hunger that can't be conquered. And by major function of his mercy. Dieless hunger. And I'll come to that shortly. But my major passion today is that any deposit you need to move your life forward, to move your destiny forward, to move your ministry forward, any deposit you need to overrun that, that, that city, any deposit you need to show the devil the road back to hell, that deposit shall be made in this conference. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. You are saying amen, shout amen at the top of your voice. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. What is the character of the revival? Number five is the fullness. Of the spirit. They were all filled. With the Holy Ghost. Filled. They didn't just get the Holy Ghost. They were filled. There is a difference. Between. Somebody just being. Just being. Uh, get, having a portion of the Holy Ghost. And is filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you know what it means? We normally used to have water around here. And a glass. Some of you hiding your water under there. That water is not, cannot perform the result. This, 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 yes, this, this water. Now, I'd like you to imagine. You know, the reason why they don't keep water around is because we don't want to, to tempt ourselves by keeping water. You know, there are a lot, so, some people that, before they finish preaching, many bottles of water has finished. And that is no challenge, but you, the salivation of the congregation. The, and the people are just watching. Say, why is this man oppressing us? <laughs> Not knowing that he's sweating it out. But, yeah, so we kept water away. Now, when this thing has water. No matter. Give me the other one. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me use this one. This has water. There's, there's nothing I do to hold it for me. Hold it for me. I do this, do this, do this. The water is still inside. The level of pressure. 
that will get this water out is much. Nobody can doubt that there is no water here. But the, the water is not sufficient to impact the environment. The water is only is contained. That's why they call it container. The water is confined. You carry grace, but it's only located within. And if, and if, you see, the, the, the kind of grace that must impact your generation is the grace that flows, that overflows. Here is the water. Here is the water. I don't need to do much to this water. It's effortlessly dropping. The ground cannot claim ignorance. It's just living its normal life. Not too much effort. And if you make any little effort. Do you understand what I'm saying? A couple from, from Holland, Bert and Anya. They are watching right now from Holland. They followed us. To, they came from Holland. To England for the meeting. They normally traveled here for meetings. So they said, How they wish that what is happening here, that said there's open heaven here. They need it in their country. That in the in, the, in their country now, if you use he or she, they say you are discriminating. That there is a category that is neither he nor she. You say you can call it. Yes. So he said, How she wishes this anointing and this open heaven can come. Then she came to the London, England meeting and said, The same thing happening here was happening there. People under power, white people talking about snake leaving their body. All manner of encounters, healings, miracles. You know what she said? She said, I thought the, whole, the open heaven was at the glory dome. I didn't know you carry it around. That was what the white woman said. I, th I, I didn't know you. He said, it, it means anywhere you arrive, it must open. Effortlessly, revival climate. Or a robber said, in the days of re healing revival, he said healing was in the air. He said you didn't do much for anybody to be healed. It is filled and it overflows. That was what happened to Aaron. He flowed from his, his bed to the skirt of his garment and he dropped on the floor. So there is a, a very easy way to locate where Aaron passed. Just trace the oil. It is very easy to confirm where you have been. The mark, that is why he said a fire devoured before them. And behind them a flame burning. There is fire in front of them. When they have come and gone, there is fire that remains behind to show that this person passed here. They that's right. All manner of things happen in that place. All man, he said, I never knew. I prayed for they themselves somewhere in the crowd. I never knew. 
I never knew. This is not Nigeria. This is England. That crowd at Excel Center. How many of you are trusting the Lord for a flow that the witches cannot claim ignorant of? A flow that will soak the land. That will soak the land where you are. That will soak the land where you are. A flow that will soak the land where you are. A flow that will soak the land where you are. That will soak the land where you are. The Assemblies of God's president of Malawi. He said, what do we do? You just step up and the climate just changes. How do we do it? Should I learn how to sing? He said, he said, they just, they just step up and then they, they, uh, in just suddenly everything changes. I prophesy today in the name that is above every name that which will flow out of you will flow out of you will flow and overflow and catch the ground and catch the village and catch the community and catch the city and catch the territory where you are is being released now If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. If you are saying amen, say the loud most amen. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest believers, amen. Lift your hands and say, Father, I receive. Say, Father, I receive the overflow dimension. Of the spirit in this revival. Say, Father, thank you for the measure of the spirit. But today, I am asking for the fullness dimension, the overflow dimension. I require it, I desire it, I demand it, I receive it. Imagine 10 people in the country with such overflow dimensions that can confront the territorial powers in your city. Confront the territorial powers. Because of the mood of the climate, I'm going to allow us to pray. shall begin to pray because it is connected to this fifth point and it is called the speakings of the spirit and they began to speak and we need this speaking 
of the spirit. The speakings of the spirit. Call it the release of the tongue. Mm. Call it the gift of utterance. God told his servant Bishop David the Yolipo, he said, I have touched your tongue today with a coal of fire. From this moment, as you say it, you will see it. The speakings of the Spirit. Where you have a voice that has a registration in the realm of the Spirit. <laughs> Manana, Jesus, we know it is registered. There is a registration of that voice. Paul, we know we have his voice recorded, coded in the realm of the spirit as a voice to obey. But who are you? We don't know your voice, it is nowhere to be found. We it's not scheduled, it's not recorded, it's not registered. There are in the realm of speaking in the prophetic realm there are many realms there is the seer realm there is the hearer realm where the seers what they see is sharper the hearers what they hear is sharper There is the Noah's. Jesus perceived in his spirit plenty times. There are the sayers. And inside that saying, there are two departments. <laughs> there is the foretelling and the fort telling. F O R T H telling. And the F O E R telling. The foretelling is saying things that you saw that you know will happen and you are saying it to, 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 to declare that they will happen because you saw it happening the fourth telling is to command what should happen is <laughs> to enforce it this is scriptural this is correct this is legal to happen. I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. But I am telling this thing to happen. <laughs> and both the foretelling and the foretelling in the speech realm, in the sayer realm, you are at the point where there is a registration in the realm of the spirit that this is a voice that cannot be turned down. This is one that commands and is obeyed. This is a voice that cannot be argued with. This is a voice that cannot be negotiated. We were in Taraba State Crusade last year it was in the month of may right was it may or april may you were there then maybe they might show us the clip terrorist terrorist stronghold when we arrived the town the first story they began to tell us was story of terrorism from the airport we saw the way the people are driving we asked the driver, what's going on? Oh, is this because of the terrorist attack in this place? It's so terrible. Since they don't know who is so, so they have, everybody has to park from the roadside. I say, wow. We saw the chief executive of the state, the number one pe person of the state. The number one story he was telling us was the terrorism. I was wondering why is everybody telling us terrorism? Not knowing that they believe we came with solution. So they have to tell us the situation of the land. To the extent
habit of telling us the last time the terrorists came here, came out, they overwhelmed the military. Can you hear a story you are telling a visitor? It was with that, that platform we went to the crusade ground. Day one. Day two. I stood there. Now, now they were doing COVID, no, no gathering, public gathering. It was their religious holiday. Number three, it was a terror. Everything was against the journey. Every single thing. 24 hours to the time. 48 hours to the time, my wife asked me, how about the crusade? I said, I'm not sure yet. And then I went into prayer. And while I prayed, the Lord said, I am going before you to open the two lift gates. He gave me two scriptures. Lift up your head, so ye gates, and be thou lifted. When I saw that scripture, what I heard is like, I am waiting for you there. Ola, ola. You are waiting for me there. Who am I to remain here? We went there. The second night of the crusade, I decreed, you can see the crowd there, I decreed and I told them, these terrorist groups are going to clash. It was a Friday night. And they, since they like killing people, they will kill each other. Friday night, five days later, the two top terrorist groups clash with each other, kill their head. Five days later, when the speakings was done, there was a registration in the realm of the spirit. And it went to pass with accuracy. I said that the earth will swallow them. A week ago, the same state, one of the towns in that state, the pastor called me on a Sunday. Pastor is here, right? It was a Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon that they went to attack. Was, yes. They went to attack a city Sunday afternoon, two Sundays ago. It's okay, you can leave it. They went to attack the city. This vigilante or whatever, the, 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 the hunters in the village, in the, in, the, in the town, whatever equipment they carried, wasted every single terrorist that arrived. None escaped. Those that were alive, that didn't die, they brought them to the city center, set them on fire. Jubilation in the land. Ay, ay, ay. We told them that this earth will be their burial ground. Tension everywhere two weeks ago. And we stood and we declared and said, this tension dies now. It died forever. And we are about to experience the birth of a new nation. No hell shall stop it. You have been speaking but not much is happening. But not after tonight. That amen can be better. Say after me, say, Father, I need a voice that is recognizable in the realm of the spirit. I need a voice. I need a deposit upon my life today. Remain standing everywhere when I'm going to pray. I need the sound from heaven. I need my ears open to hear from heaven. I need the light from heaven. I need my eyes open to see. I need the warmth from heaven. The wind from heaven. I need that evidential Christianity. Evidential spirituality. Experiential. Father, I know I, have a, I need a deposit in my life. I know there is something in my life that needs to move me to the next level. And I need it right now. I need the fullness of the spirit. The overflow dimension. Where what I carry can saturate the earth. I need the speakings of the spirit. 
I need the release of my tongue. I need the gift of utterance. I can't be dumb spiritually. I have to speak with a voice that is registered in the realm of the spirit. A voice that is registered. A voice that is registered. A voice that is registered in the realm of the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to pray. <laughs>